welcome to this week's edition of The Butcher and the Chef. Today we're going to do a bucatini carbonara, one of my favorite dishes that we do here in Cafe Anello. What's interesting about this dish is it's going to be the actual Roman traditional way of preparing it. In the States here, we have a tendency oftentimes to use cream in this sauce. This one today we're going to use the actual yolks of the egg, the way you would eat it if you were there in Italy. We have a special guest today as well, Matt Borgensen. I'll introduce you to him in a moment. He's our sous chef here at Cafe Anello, and he prepares this dish on a nightly basis. Hi, my name is Matt Borgerson. I'm the sous chef here at Cafe Anello, and today I'll be walking you through how we make our homemade pasta. So we're going to start here. We have our scale ready, and we're going to be weighing out seven pounds of a durum flour. We use a Sperry Extra Fancy Durham here at Cafe Anello. We find that that yields the best consistency when working with pasta. All right, so we got about seven pounds there. We always go a little touch over when weighing out just because loss of flour often happens when transporting. And now we have semolina number one, our secondary flour we use here for the pasta. All right, so you have just over three pounds here of the semolina flour. And now, with our two dry ingredients ready, those will go into the pasta machine, which we will begin to incorporate while we prepare our wet mixture. So here we have our durum flour, which will go into the pot first. We'll now add semolina, the second part of our dry mixture. Now we will attach the dye setting, which will determine what kind of pasta comes out. So for this particular dish, we'll be using the bucatini, which is a hollowed out round noodle. So we'll attach this onto here like so. And then this gets spun around and tightened down. I'm gonna slowly incorporate these two by mixing it without wet ingredients, just so the flowers have a time to kind of get familiar with each other and incorporate together. All right, guys, now that we've incorporated our two dry ingredients, we're going to prepare our wet or our egg mixture. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start out with 10 large whole eggs, which will come out to be about a little over one pound. Using a simple whisk, we'll break apart the yolks and kind of incorporate a little bit of air into the mixture. We will add our purified water just till we hit just over three pounds of this as well. All right, we'll reincorporate this one last time to have one consistent mixture. So now we have our egg wash mixture, which we're going to now incorporate into the two flours, which have had some time to get to know each other. We're going to add this in slowly, going from left to right, back to left, just so it's evenly distributed amongst the pot as it needs. We're going to let this go for about 10 minutes and then we'll begin to extrude. We're coming up on around 10 minutes now, so I'm going to turn this puppy off and see how we're doing. See, easiest way to test is if you can grab a ball and it comes together really easy like that, you're definitely on your way to done. All right, so we're happy with where the consistency is. We're going to turn on the extruder and whether or not you eat any dish here at Cafe Anello, whether it's rigatoni, bucatini, linguine, spaghetti, or even if you buy, were to buy a pound off of our shelves, it is all came out of this machine, handmade by myself personally. All right, so this is starting to come out of the extruder now. Get our sheet pan up and begin to nest. So when you're nesting it, you kind of just want to lay the noodle in line and have some sort of consistency and then as far as length goes, we probably go about 10 inches. So it comes out, up, down, around, tuck, and pull. And now these are individual servings for every dish here at Anello. We like to serve a hefty portion of pasta, as far as restaurant standards go, at about six to seven ounces. Now obviously you can't feel this, but this pasta that's coming out right now is in fact actually warm which is actually pretty neat because the pasta is actually beginning to come together and the proteins are sort of binding in this process. We have one full tray done, which we now bring into the front of the kitchen to prepare our bucatini carbonara. One of the main ingredients is the yellow onion, which needs to be down into a pretty fine chop. So what we're gonna do with these two onions is we're going to remove the tops, creating a flat surface with the root side sticking up. We are now going to keep the root intact 
by coming down through the top of it and again keeping a flat surface. You'll see on an onion how it has natural layers. We're going to use those layers to our advantage by performing a cutting technique to chop this evenly. We'll have our hands at the top of the onion, blade against the bottom of your surface, and you'll bring it down towards your palm going across the grain. You'll then rotate the onion, bring your knife to the top, performing several downward cuts to again keeping the root intact on the back, and now you have cuts going from the top and lengthways. We'll now perform a simple chop. So now we're going to um, render off some pancetta in our saute pan. Just get a lick of olive oil down there first. We're going to do this over high heat to get as much fat out of the pancetta as possible. So that will now sit here. We'll get turned to a nice brown color, rendering most of the fat out of the pancetta, which is a crucial ingredient for the Bucatini carbonara. So at this point, our pancetta is rendered up to a pretty solid consistency. We're going to add a few tablespoons of butter. So at this stage, we're going to add the onions that we prepared earlier, just to cover the top of the pan. At this stage, I'm going to add about a tablespoon of minced garlic. Just another aromatic that will just heighten the flavor a little bit of the dish. I'll incorporate this again. We'll let that go for another two or three minutes, and then we will finish the dish. So the pancetta and onion mixture is coming to a close. The onions are now nice and soft, very tender with almost little bite. All the flavor and fat has been extracted from the pancetta and is now going to sit. I'm now going to transfer this into a small metal bowl, and then Chef John will be over to complete the dish. Matteo. What's up, Chef? Looking good, bud. Yep. Prep uh, the set. The onion and pancetta mixture is rendered. Fantastic. Right. Separate. Correct. You're preparing your egg yolks now for you. Beautiful. The bucatini is pulled on the speed rack. Excellent. And water salted into a boil. Excellent. Got it together. Nice work, Matteo. Thank you, Chef. You're welcome. So what we have here is the rendered down pancetta with the onion in it as well. I have pecorino romano with some cracked pepper in it. This is approximately three egg yolks that Matteo has prepared, and this is the fresh bucatini cut pasta. The reason we use the bucatini cut is it's a hollowed out pasta. What happens is the sauce and everything that we incorporate with it gets absorbed by this type of a cut of pasta. So it makes it more flavorful, especially when you have the strength of this pancetta flavoring and the richness of the yolks in the Pecorino Romano. So I'm going to drop this nest now. So while we're waiting for the bucatini to reach a state of al dente, which means to the tooth in Italian, I want to talk a little bit about where I first was introduced to this dish, why I fell in love with it. My brother lived in Rome for a short period of time and I would go there to travel to visit him. And I ate at the oldest restaurant in Rome called Il Capagna. And I had this for the first time. So typically this dish is done traditionally with the cheek of the pig, uh, which you can find. It's called Cinquale. You can find it Arthur Avenue in the Bronx. Some special delicatessens uh, will carry. But for the most part, you can use just pancetta which you can find at any supermarket. But I remember eating this for the first time and falling in love with the dish, and I could not figure out what was so different about the experience from when I had it here in the States and what it was like when I had it in Rome. And the head maitre d' introduced me to all the ingredients that are incorporated in the dish, and I had to bring it back to the country to share with everybody. So our pasta is finished now, nice and al dente. And with fresh cut pasta, your time on cooking is going to be much lower than dry pasta. You're only looking at about 90 seconds when it's fresh. So we're going to dump this right into our bowl and incorporate all of this together. Okay. I'm going to start by adding the pancetta, the onion, nice and rendered down. Okay. We're going to get this moving around a little bit. Get it all mixed up nicely. I'm going to add a little bit of our egg yolk. and we're going to start to move that around. And you want to move it around pretty rapidly because the heat of the pasta with the yolk will cause it to clump. So we want to keep that in motion. 
And then we're going to also ladle a little bit of our starch water into it. Just a tad bit, just to keep, keep it nice and saucy, if you want to say it. There we go. We'll keep moving that around. And now I'm going to add my cracked pepper and Pecorino Romano cheese into it. And this gets a nice, healthy portion of it. There we are. And again, we're going to keep it moving around so that we don't get a grainy texture. All of this stuff mixed together in a bowl spells one thing, ladies and gentlemen, and that is heaven. And we're set. Now we're going to plate these. Look at that. Oh, what is better than that? And then, of course, we have to finish it with all that delicious sauce. That'll go right on top of it. And we're going to finish with a little bit more of the pecorino right on the top. So here we have it our wonderfully plated, delicious looking Bucatini Carbonara. We have that here, as you know, at Cafe Nella. So we hope to either have you in to enjoy it or enjoy it at home with this recipe. And we'll catch you next week, The Butcher and the Shoe.